Okay, we're recording. Okay, just wanted you guys to say, uh, meet my 86 year old father, Boje, Chris in America, emigrated from Croatia. He's 86 years old. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're if you of Croatian health, then you quit smoking by 65. You keep chugging along like that. What are you doing? You having some tomato? Let, let them see nothing. Oh, it's right here. It's the camera. Oh, okay. Right there. So yeah. small, small picture. Yeah. This? I don't know. Anyways, I, I'm going to be back to my drawing. All right? Okay. Bye bye. Like a notch. Like a notch is Croatian for good night. And we're back, getting back to drawing. I'm going to go. Yeah, all right. I'm talking to a camera. Yay. All right, well, hopefully you guys didn't have to flip that. Oh, no. I got to be careful with that photo. So anyways, I wanted to show you guys, so part of my book, like part of the theme of the book is going to be like the uh, the whole, uh, you know, like what it's like being the first generation uh, with after, like post-AIDS, going through your 20s and stuff. The other thing is just like the style at the time, like, let me see, so can you see, you can see me in, can you see my, my print shirt? It's got like 15 different colors of mustard, right? And there's my other buddy. You could probably see his paisleys, the blue paisleys. Ah, oh, good times, good times. And yeah, you see on her wall, what does it say? It's like this little thing celebrating Black History Month, so we cared back then. But believe it or not, I'm not going to get into all the race stuff, but black people have it a lot better nowadays because, like, that Rodney King stuff, that was back then. That wasn't, like, the 60s. That was kind of recent, so... Anyways, we're not going to go there. But yeah, really recent. Okay. You doing okay, Tata? Huh? You doing okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, he's doing okay. You guys doing okay? Alright, well, go ahead and top off your drinks. Oh, no. Did you guys figure out why I wanted you to do the whole wet the paper towel thing? Yeah, dude, you were supposed to lose. My God, you wanted rock, paper, scissors, and she wiped off your fingers? Okay, that's cool. Anyways, I'll tell you why the wet, wet towel later. <laughs> but those of you who, like, stopped during the break to, like, bump fuzzies, they already figured it out, so. Anyways, we're going to keep it clean and Catholic. Okay, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, shade in a little bit more of just like the lightest skin tone and that's just to, for me to kind of give myself more of a focus in because I know I'm no way in hell I'm gonna finish this tonight but either way I'm gonna have a good time I hope you're having a good time Tati you having a good time? Huh? You having a good time? Yeah. Okay he's having a good time too. All right so everybody's having a good time. Yes, you can have, uh, yes, I can use the light skin tone in the hair. And the reason for that is the, uh, the, I actually have a light coming this direction on this side. And it sort of matches this photo. So it was actually just this sort of accidental thing, like, the, um, uh, oh, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, and I still don't know what to do about the background. But, uh, and that actually kind of determines a lot, doesn't it? Yes, it does. What am I going to do for the background? Because the background, the background on this side is going to determine the white reflection a lot. Also, some of the reflection in the lighter skin tones. <clears throat> this side, I think I was going to just go black. Dun dun dun. And then I have to think about the lettering. So the lighter lettering, I probably want to go with light color just to kind of give it a pop. Maybe I could sort of do a gray scale background, but even the Rinkler flag sort of a red. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, I am just going to go with. I'm going to go with Old Glory. Hmm. Sort of. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Yeah, all right, so. If, since I don't know what to do, I'm going to do something. A quote I made up myself, I think. It's somebody else part of you said it, but... Do you know what you get when you do nothing? You get nothing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the Marine Corps flag in this side. On this side here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a corner of Old Glory. And I am looking on my wall for my visual cue. And my first line here, whatever width I do for the this red is going to determine the rest of it. Yay! Decide and roll with it. Even in, in real life, the uh, most of you probably notice the. Uh, no, don't get don't get too gospelly. But it's like the toughest decisions in life. They're they're always they're never the ones that are kind of obvious. It always just seems to be the the ones where you end up where they're really kind of similar, and a lot of times. If you look at the outcomes, they're really not that drastic. And then, also, you, sometimes you just have the, uh, regardless of which path you pick, you end up kind of, you know, you end up picking one path, but you still end up with a whole bunch of trees afterwards. If that helped you out, you know, think a cannabis indica farmer. I, I mentioned before I was doing a little gelato, I did stop. If you are, dating and an adult then uh, you might want to try some of the stuff I had earlier is this gelato shatter from if you're in Illinois from gold leaf the thing it's got like it's real Spanish fly I was sitting there I started drawing I'm like dude I'm drawing myself I'm popping wood how sick is that but all these incredibly wrong things happened to me and my, I don't think my father understands what I'm saying oh man this is horrible <laughs> it's okay though Oh man, oh man. You know, uh, yeah, since I'm saying a lot of positive things about uh, cannabis, I'm gonna have to do the whole, uh, do the whole make them do the checkbox thing, so. Sorry if you're an adult, and you have to check the whole, you know, am I an adult checkbox, cause, you know, your kid's gonna have to check that same box, so, gotta protect them. You, so anyways, the width, we're going to, I'm going about, well, I don't know, maybe two of these things. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but proportion here, you know, I didn't have a, didn't really start with anything. It's probably still important. Let's see, boom, boom. Yeah, the Freedom Wagon. Ooh, the uh, the shocks were pretty much gone when I bought them, and that was like one of the things, you know, and uh, if you're an enlisted man in the Marine Corps, you, you don't have a lot of money, so uh, you kind of have to wing a lot of things, and, you know, we didn't have a shop or anything, and the shocks were gone, or the shocks were gone, and I was just like, well, coils are working fine, but that car, do I ever smoke? But that car, like, I put in brand new brakes, and when I'd pump the brakes, the whole thing would kind of bounce. Like, it's sort of like that, like the whole Cholo ride. And back then in the 90s, it was pretty cool. And before they had spinners, spinners are like old school now, but even before then, what everybody had was you had the um, the wire, the wire chrome wheels on, coming out of the car. And of course, mine were hubcaps, but that chrome, man, I kept that polished and shiny. It was badass. Cream station wagon, had the luggage rack on the top, it had the fake wood panel, yeah, you know, it's like the, the fake Walmart, you know, uh, wood paneling, but the grain that was in there, you know, that was walnut. It wasn't just some fake wood, it was like walnut grain, so it was beautiful. And the cream. Alrighty, so I am... Uh, I'm trying to decide how I want to handle this. I don't think I went long enough quite, but... So if this is going to be red, I have to keep in mind the whole lettering here, since I want the letters to sort of pop out of the page. And remember, I'm not a professional. My Twitter bio says mental, mentally crippled, and I really am mentally crippled, so... I have this golf or illness thing, probably mentioned already. Yeah, let's just paint. You never know, I might actually be able to come up with enough funny stuff to actually make this into a... A first date kind of thing. So the other half here, I'm going to go with my.
crimson. So if they're crimson, I'm gonna use this, the same red, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grayscale it in later. You know what, I might even kind of speed the whole thing up for a little bit. Just so those of you that didn't bump fuzzies last time can go ahead and bump fuzzies next time. I know, I was at age once too, and healthy. And actually, when I look back at my other photos, I was like, you know, I know I wasn't the best looking guy, but I took pretty good damn good care of myself. And you should too. And I remember just, you know, uh, being in my 20s, I'd, every now and then I'd run into the, the, the old timer, the guy was 50, and they'd kind of give me the line with, hey, you know, you know what you put in your body in your 20s and 30s comes out in your 40s and 50s, right? Well, it turns out I ended up with this golf war illness bullshit, so it really didn't matter anyways. If I knew, if I knew what I do now, fuck, man, I would have partied so much harder. No, I'm kidding. That's not one of my regrets. One of my real, real regrets? Yeah, I know. Some of you just did it after your little fuzzy bumping session. But, uh, and I mentioned this in another video, but the, uh, there are like five cigarettes that I enjoyed smoking, like that are memorable in, in my entire time smoking cigarettes. And smoking cigarettes, it's kind of held me back in so many different ways besides smell, smelling filthy. Um, but there, there are five that I remember that were really, really good cigarettes. And every single one of those, that's right, every single one of those came after sex. So, because they came after sex, uh, I was already in like a really, really, really good place. So, the cigarettes really didn't enhance anything. It's really just a, a waste of money and a filthy habit. So, just because you see me using cigarettes for a prop or you see the old photos, I do regret it. I did quit smoking after my first triathlon. I, it really was a good motivator. I swore to God that I was going to quit beforehand, but I didn't. Uh, but I did end up doing uh, seven triathlons, which, you know, now I'd look back and like, yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, in reality, the toughest part of the triathlon isn't doing a triathlon. The toughest part of the triathlon, I'm sure you have to train and everything, but the toughest part is showing up. I, of, of the seven triathlons I've done, I signed up for about maybe 16 or 17, so. Yeah, some of them I, I felt like I didn't train. That was my excuse for not showing up, but yeah. Go for it. Seriously, go for it. I know a lot of people can't swim. I was a Marine Corps instructor, water survival. And yes, it's true, when a Marine Corps instructor, water survival steps in the ocean, all the sharks will immediately look the other way for fear of making eye contact. It's true. No, it's not the, no, I'm not gonna show any medication. But it's not that talking. Not lore either. Nope, no siree. It might just be that. I don't know what to say next. <sighs> yep, that could be exactly what it is. Usually my golf for illness will uh, redirect my uh, conversation continuously. It just doesn't seem to be working right now very well. Oh, that's because I'm kind of getting lost between what I'm saying and the contrasting between the uh, yeah, you can get your fingers dirty again. Yeah, you should use a new towel with warm water. And no, you're not gonna rock, paper, scissors again, dude. Fuck. No, it's not sexist. Really key differences between sexism and chivalry. We'll talk about them later. Or now if I run out of stuff to talk about. Yes, I'm a traditionalist. Yes. The woman should walk behind the man when they're going downstairs and she's in heels. Yeah, I got you there, didn't I? Because, dude, if, if, she, if she trips over those heels and she starts going down, we, you're gonna fucking dive after her, right? Like a, some kind of douchebag linebacker? Come on, man, no. The woman follows the man. If she's in heels and you're going downstairs. All right, cool. I know, I need to put it, I should have left in some stars. Oh, no, I'm not gonna blame the pot, even though, yeah, that probably was the pot this time. Oh, Cause I did load up a little bit. 
But yeah, that gelato stuff, I can't smoke it anymore because I'm in my father's house and traditional Catholic family, it's ever religious everywhere. So, oh yeah, I gotta, if I st make masturbation jokes. Anyways, I, I'm in a, like a practical church, so I'm gonna have to, I don't know how I can stay here, but yeah, how are you know, Harry, Harry Weinstein here. I gotta, I really gotta work on what I'm gonna say. Anyways, as I mentioned before, I got. <laughs> I do have like a Me Too story that I'm gonna tell later. It's sort of graphic. The overview, sort of. Um, uh, I'm just. You know, I don't want to get to the whole thing, but it's. It, it starts off with me. I'm probably like 30 years old. I was the captain of the softball team. It was like our pitcher's house. Long day drinking, ate like three times, drank a lot, and uh, I'm walking down this hallway, and I over here in like in the living room you hear the uh, that I just I see all the, the the people this way like all the women just sort of like jump in the air. Uh, then one of the girls I was talking to earlier when I was with my summer fling girlfriend whatever I was going back to college that day. It's last time I saw it. Sorry. Uh, oh my god, tangents. Anyways. This girl, she walks, she walks by me. She goes, "Oh my God, I can't believe he hit her!" And woo, I tell you what, she uh, she walked right by the exact the right guy. I ended up going around the corner, and there were a whole bunch of people in there, and I wasn't holding back. I I mean, just the fact that I heard the sound and I saw everybody jump. I didn't even have to see her being hit. Just everybody else's reaction was horrified. I came around the corner, and I was like. What's going on in here? It's somebody beating, beating up a woman? But then uh, all the people kind of got in the room and it's like, dude, they're just talking with his girlfriend, nobody hit nobody, and people kind of separated us. Or it turns out, my brother Luke, who he'll be in the book too, he was in Boys Town, you know, the whole, um, he, ain't, he ain't heavy, he's my, uh, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. That's Luke's kind of been like that for me my whole life. I don't want him to hear that, but that's the whole sibling rivalry thing. I went to the Marines, he went to jail. We'll talk about him later. Um, so anyways, um, oh, so Luke had us, I was going on, they ended up, so I, they ended up, you know, ushering me out this way, then they took him that way, and there was a kitchen over here. And I'm still really angry about what happened, but at this time I noticed that um, the guy, in my book I'll talk to you about my best friend, Jared, he was about his size, so it's like, when I saw him, I knew I really didn't have a chance. And then, you know, you, you kind of pump yourself up like, I still got to do it. And, I, you know, my goal was I really, I, I, I know I had to give him a black eye and I knew you had to like, like give him a bloody lip. And I really wanted the, the, the if, you, if you've ever been in a fight or if you've fought a few times or if you've been in the military, you know that when you get your nose broken, you get like the, uh, the raccoon eyes for two weeks. So, so that was sort of a goal. So, so I came back around the kitchen and I kind of saw the guy, you know, talking to a couple of friends. And so this is the, the picture of Paul. It's his, it's, his, it's his brand new house. And there were like a bunch of people that had, you know, it was kind of like an elegant party where we weren't we were probably like 30s at this point. But he had like all these brand new cabinet doors open. My brother Luke comes barreling through. And I just see, I just see him like swinging. And like the doors on the cabinets are all flying off. And then I hear him yell, you fuck with my brother, and I see him go pop, pop, and he got the guy a couple times, and then everybody kind of spread them apart. Now, if that had happened, I saw the guy, and I was like, dude, let's go outside. I got him outside, and I was just like, all right, I, I should have hit him with a cheap shot because he's so much bigger than I was, but uh, I was, uh, I, you know, I was three meals and 20 beers into my day, and I didn't know it at the time, but it turns out that this guy was like the most popular cocaine dealer in Gertie, so I was... 20 beers slow and this guy was just amped up and that's probably why he was smacking on his girlfriend. But either way, the reason I did that is specifically, and it, it really kind of um, matters now because the whole Harvey Weinstein era and that really kind of creeps me out, just the fact that any woman would ever have to deal with anything like that. But anyways, um, the, you know, we went at it. It's like maybe I like barely clipped him a couple times, but he got me down on the ground. And he kind of popped me a couple times. We kind of got in a little wrestle, and you know maybe I kind of grazed him a little bit. But then uh, he was, you know, he was gaining weight on me. So then, you know, kind of rolled apart. We kind of got up, and he's like, "Dude, you don't know, stand a chance." And I was like, <laughs> I, "You know, I'm not doing this because, <clears throat> sorry, 
I'm not doing this because I think I got a chance, you fucking cocksucker, and went charging at him. Uh, then this time I actually uh, grazed him, like, not, not in the eye, but just over the top of his head, but yeah. This time he actually managed to wrap me down on the ground, and he got me on the ground, and he was just boom, 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 boom. He was just kind of pummeling me. Eventually, I managed to get sort of get a, my leg leg out on top of him. And at this point, I'm hurting pretty bad, but deep down inside, I'm still burning about what I know happened. So he's like, "You give up? You give up?" And I'm like, "Fuck you!" And we and uh, uh oh, you know what the cocksucker did? He rubbed my face against the asphalt. Motherfucker. Anyways, I didn't care. It, it's to this day it doesn't bother me at all. We uh, we managed to split apart, right? Well, then this time, uh, he got up, and I could tell he was a little winded. I gave him a good charge, and I actually managed to get on top of him. Uh, then, uh, I think he, like, he sort of, like, wrapped his arm, sort of, like, down, like, like he was kind of going for my leg to flip me over. But, he, and then he locked my right arm, but my left arm was just like, ooh, 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 ooh. And I dotted, like, the side of his face. I didn't catch his eye, but I saw that I split his lip open. And for me, that was sort of a victory. And of course, at this point, 20 beers into this day, uh, I finally went over for three. He just flipped me over and kind of. Uh, then a couple of my friends came out. One, one of them, Gary, uh, he came out and he was like, hey, Steve's out here, Steve's out here. And uh, then he starts picking me up and he's like, Luke, Luke, he got your brother. And sure enough, that guy got up and he ran away. So he had to deal with me as the walking dead, other than the he ain't heavy, he's my brother. Other than Gary, you know, as soon as Gary got close to the house, he like passed me off to someone, the, the two of them went chasing him. You know what they did? They chased him to the tollway and the guy actually ran across. And do you know how insanely dangerous that is? It, at 20, 30 miles an hour, you can judge the speed of a car coming, right? But at 80 miles an hour, when you're trying to go across, no way! You are, you, if you ever do that, you're insane. And yeah, this is running a little too long. But yeah, um, the reason I think that would probably be a good Me Too story is just because most guys, I don't believe, are like that. And just the fact that women would have to, you know, when I walked up to them, they'd have to worry about, am I that type? It's disgusting. So anyways, um, this story actually does have a happy ending. It'll be my book. And... Um, I want to keep on drawing, and I'm going to get some lettering in there. But for now, I'm going to let you go ahead and, oh, no, that wine bottle's open. That, that wine bottle's almost empty. You got the backup. Just go ahead and pull it out. We're going to be drawing for a little bit more. All right, and if you have to go to sleep, understand God's speed. And I will be right back. And, yeah, I'm going to talk up a little more. No, it's not going to be gelato. It's going to be, um, oh, I went back to the Grand, grand Doggy Perps. Still, I think, the best for... Their overall PTSD, golf war illness, um, definitely for the chronic pain. I mean, that's, woo, this stuff's pretty awesome. And uh, I'll be back in a little bit. Godspeed.